Lewin, so Paul and Lewin, Lego Vibe Star Tell. Look how the innocent you them. They're ready. Alright, zoom up, Snakey. Let them see it. Okay. See it, huh? Paul and Lewin. Alright. Free card tell. Yeah, man, make them see it, man. Yeah, make them see the picture. Come, zoom up on your picture, man. See it, huh? And make sure you see it. See, they fall out of the Lift up the man, see it, make them see. See it, huh? Now, take up your picture, make them see it, huh? Yeah, man. See, with our ramp, see, I ain't real sent by your blood, man. Mark our dung back now. Yeah. So, Paul, huh? For years now you have been keeping up Shagri, the company of General Fredar. Mm. Even hand away everybody afraid of Freda Paul Alwin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen me, I want man alone Mr. take her on a PJ party. Yeah, PJ party, level and blunting. So you're wrong like a PNP man then. Mark Golden Fredar. So why them? So listen me, so Paul Alwin, Lego Vibe Star Tell. Look how the innocent you them. Because they can hear Shadi. The whole of the law firm called me and said, Emperor, you are Lord who can't depend upon evil law, you afraid of her. Mm. Yes, she can't move. And she come back and she have a rock at Gibraltar. Mm -hmm. I like I she had the old DPP in the world. Blessed morning to my viewers and my subscribers. I hope everybody having a blessed and a wonderful morning. Now, my viewers and my subscribers, remember, in everything you do, always put God first in every. And any situation, just always remember for call upon God. Always remember for pray. Because a prayer day keep the devil away. And remember this. We don't believe in a Uber. We don't believe in a iniquity working. We believe in a Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We believe in a prayers because prayers break any curse and any shackles. You understand me? I say, no people, Mark Golding has been the talk of the town. Even one of the biggest labor rights in the country, Cliff Hughes, I give Mark Golin in props. Yes, people. Cliff Hughes, I give Mark Golin in props. And Cliff Hughes, I make Andrew Wallace know, say, go back to the giant board because Mark Golin, I beat you really bad. Not just Cliff Hughes, but other people stand up for Mark Golin as well. Now, people, I have a lot coming up inside this video. You understand Cliff Hughes even go as far as say Andrew Wallace lose the local government election and him know that so him need to start act like a man and stand up on his foot like a man and see if he can win over back the people them because Mark Golden bring him real politics. People make a run the intro and come back. So welcome back to my viewers and my subscribers. Big up to all of my viewers. Big up to all of my subscribers. We continually support the channel and I help the channel to grow. Now, remember to leave a like on this video. Remember to give it a thumbs up. Also, if it's a new viewer's first time on my channel, then please subscribe to my channel and turn on the post notification bell. So whenever we drop new content, you will be first to be notified. And remember... We are almost at 90k subscribers, so if you're not subscribed, now is the right time for you to subscribe. And if you subscribe already, then share the content to a friend, to a family, to a loved one, and your social media. Tell them to subscribe to the Dancer Reality Review TV. Now, people, since the debate, Mark Golden have been the talk of the town. And one of the persons that have been talking about Mark Golden is Cliff Hughes. And a pure props Cliff Hughes I give to Mark Golden. People, me I go play this video for you guys. But remember, if you believe say Mark Golden is a true leader, then leave it down below in the comment section and leave a like on this video. Let us get it to at least 1,000 likes. Now, check this out. Yesterday, yesterday afternoon, until that incident. Mark Golding as a batsman. As a batsman. Was scoring runs. He was scoring runs. Including a few boundaries. Including a few boundaries. 
And then that happened. So to the specifics of what happened yesterday. Unless you're under some rock, you should be aware that the opposition leader was well into his presentation. He had sketched the outline of a raft of policy issues and initiatives that we could expect if he were to be given the job of Prime Minister of Jamaica sometime next year. He critiqued the presentation of the finance minister. One of the things that stood out for me, several things stood out, but one of them is, in skillfully not meeting the challenge of outlining how his proposed $3 million income tax threshold could be financed, what did he do instead? He critiqued effectively, I thought, the reverse tax credit of $20,000 and said, put that money together with what you've already found to increase the tax threshold to $1.7 million and so afford the ability, the fiscal space to move the tax threshold to just over $2 million. I look forward to the finance minister's response on that next week. He also dealt with the issue of the GCT being removed from local raw food imports, including fruits and vegetables, and challenged the finance minister to prove on what basis he's claiming that Jamaica could be at risk of being blacklisted according to the WTO rules governing such imports. Hmm? So he was scoring runs. For the first time, you could hear what are the policy priorities if the PNP were to be elected government from Mark Golding. And then he spoke to the issue of governance, move to governance towards the end of his presentation. And he attacked the handling of the Speaker's chair by Juliet Holness, the Member of Parliament for East Royal St. Andrew, who happens to be the wife of the Prime Minister, the head of the political executive. And if you're watching on YouTube, you see the Prime Minister's facial expression there, visibly angry at the comments of Mr. Golding. The Prime Minister was the first to leave the chamber, followed by several government MPs. It wasn't over, and those scenes will be forever in the annals of the history of the Jamaican House of Representatives. It was a member for Southwest St. Catherine Everett Warmington who returned to the chamber, the only government member to return, to inform the Deputy Speaker, Heroy Clark, who is a member for Central St. James, that he was duty-bound to adjourn the sitting due to the lack of a quorum. Now, recall now there are 63 members of Parliament. The PNP has 14 MPs. And the standing orders require that at least 17 members to be present for there to be a quorum for any sitting of the House. Deputy Speaker of the House there, Heroy Clark, well, he was, according to the rules, giving the government members five minutes to consider their position, to return to the House so that its business could continue. They did not return after the five minutes was exhausted. And we learned this morning from the member for Central St. Catherine, who was the acting leader of the House, the veteran parliamentarian, Babsy Grange. She told Tona and Ricardo this morning that she had reached out to the leader of the opposition business, Mr. Philip Paulwell, according to Ms. Grange, to get the leader to withdraw the specific comments, 
criticism of the speaker and they refused and at that point the die was cast both sides were digging in it wasn't over hmm? because Mark Golding went outside the house and in the streets yes in the precincts of the house he completed his presentation and doubled down on his objection to Juliet Holness continuing to sit as Speaker of the House. If she has been guilty or being accused of hiding reports or holding on to reports, say so. That is a legitimate concern whether you are inside or outside the house to raise. Legitimate concerns. This is not bad inherently for the democracy, you know. It means that our democracy is alive and kicking. The other thing is the reaction of the Prime Minister and the government yesterday. I can understand any man instinctively wanting to defend his wife. But Andrew Holness, for the same reason, we cannot premise the discourse on the fact that she is the, the spouse of the Prime Minister. It's for the same reason he is boiling and seething. But was his reaction over the top? It may very well have been. Yes? As Prime Minister, you get some hard knocks in Jamaican politics. I have a chin up and take it on the chin. And he has been getting some hard knocks. But should he and the other government members walk out of the house yesterday afternoon and create this unprecedented situation we're in now? No, they should not. He has his moment come Thursday. Thursday. You know, Jamaican people say, bite your lip. Bite your lip. A year time coming on Thursday when you can count a punch. They should not have walked out of the house and put us in a, put us in a place now where we have never been. We have never been here. Will Mr. Golding be allowed to complete his presentation in the house? Do the rules contemplate such an event, an occurrence? I don't know. What we do know is that as a result of what happened yesterday, triggered by Mr. Golding's attack on Mrs. Holness and the government's reaction, the political heat this morning in the country, yeah, is off the chart. And I just want us to understand that we need to cool it. It would seem to me that this full-blown political row that's now raging between the governing Jamaica Labour Party and the opposition, when you strip it to its bare essentials, its politics, raw politics. It signifies that it will be a dog fight until the next elections are called and the polls close. And hopefully we'll have a clear 
and a de and decisive winner. But if I don't tell you that I'm concerned, I'd be lying. I lived through what this country went through. All right, so stop a minute, my viewers and subscribers. We soon play back the audio or the video. Now, what um, Cliff Hughes mean by we should be worried because this is raw politics. He mean that the heat that Andrew Wallace and the Jamaican Labour Party are hidden. You're looking at war. You're looking at war. And what he's saying is that people should be concerned. I'm telling you, you know, Andrew Wallace cannot take loses and him believe in a dirty politics. So what is going on right now is war is bubbling up in the air. And when you hear Cliff Hughes can come out and tell you, say, he's concerned until the next general election when somebody win. You must know that things are very serious because Mark Golden a fling up some thump under Andrew Wallace's skin and Andrew Wallace cannot take the punches. So he's going to play dirty politics because things are hurting at the moment. Mark Golden run up for Andrew Wallace wickedly. All right. So Cliff Hughes, I got to tell you now, we really are going with Mark Golden. And oh, he might take over Jamaica by his time. Listen up. Yesterday, I made the point that Mark Golding had to show whether he could or is ready for the job. You see that move yesterday afternoon after the government side effectively shut him down in the parliament. You see the political reaction of going outside beside headquarters house on Duke Street and completing his presentation. Yeah? Not only completing his presentation, but having that media briefing after. Politically, he won the optics. He won the optics politically. Yeah? This photograph on the front page of the Gleaner this morning. Yes? It's all over social media. This photograph of him on the outside of the parliament completing his presentation is a political winner for him. The optics look good politically for him. And the Jamaica Labour Party and the administration of Michael Holness, Andrew Michael Holness, must reckon with the fact that they're in a new political game. They now have an opponent who's very confident, assured, and is no longer second-guessing himself. Mark Golding showed yesterday that he might run the place. He might run the place. He has the political wind behind his back. And the government will have to do a reset. It will have to do a reset. The strategy of the People's National Party over the last two and a half years to target Andrew Holness continued yesterday because when they went after Juliet Holness, they're also going after Andrew Holness. And uh, the Labour Party needs to sit down and first of all, recognize that politically, they lost on February 26. They lost. And they have to wheel and come back. So stick up in again. So right there and then, Cliff use a reminder, Andrew Wallace, listen, on a political ground, 
and February 26, that was the local government election. You lost. You lost the local government election. And now you are about to last the general election because Mark Golden a put up a fight. He's not afraid of you. But people, make we continue to listen, all right? They have a year and a half to do so. You know, just getting this. Based on the results of the local government elections of February 26, what would have been the seat count after the votes are tallied? The JLP would have lost 16 seats, 16 of the 49 they have, resulting in a narrow three-seat majority for the JLP. They would have won the elections with 33 seats to the PNP's 30. They would have lost 16 of the 49 they now have. They would have lost Juliet Holness's East Rose in Andrew. They would have lost Miss Michelle Charles's Eastern St. Thomas. They would have lost Bobby Montague's Western St. Mary. They would have lost Tova Hamilton in Northern Trelawney. They would have lost Marlene Malahu Fort in West Central St. James. They would have lost Homer Davis in South St. James. They would have lost Dave Brown in East Hanover. And West Hanover, Tamika Davis. They would have lost West Westmoreland with Moreland Wilson, Central Westmoreland. They would have lost East Westmoreland. They would have lost North East St. Elizabeth. So too, South Manchester. Rhoda Moy Crawford would have lost Central, Cent Central Manchester. They would have lost North West Clarendon. South East St. Catherine, where Big Rob is. Yes? And they would have won the following three seats by fewer, less than 300 votes. Favel Williams, Eastern St. Andrew, Audley Shores, North East Manchester, and East Central St. Catherine, there, that's Orlando Terrellong. They would have won those seats by less than 300 votes. The political calculus in the country has shifted. It's all to play for now. The danger we face as a country this morning can we afford for the political temperature to overheat? No, we cannot afford that. Da da di da 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 di da da da. People, my viewers and my subscribers, wanna hear what Cliff you say, people? Wanna hear what Cliff you say, people? If it was uh, the general election and Joe Wallace said I get a run for him money and he would have lose the whole I'm original labor rights seat them everything including him wife seat including Rhoda Carford it cho may not have a call out everybody but people and Joe Wallace would have lose the whole I'm original seat them we have a pack up and put them in a one corner now people Mark Golden is working. They used to hide him speech them, but they can't anymore. Andrew Wellness will they run out. And the people of Jamaica started to see again because a good over evil. Now people stay the thought and that down below in the comment section and subscribe.